Hey everybody, thanks for joining us today. We are continuing our series on lessons that I learned from watching The Chosen. And today, I'm gonna give you three takeaways on how not to put God in a box and to make sure that you don't miss out on what God is possibly wanting to do in your life and in the world around you. And so it comes from this quote from Nicodemus and another Pharisee. They're arguing over interpretation of what the actual written word says and what it means. And that can be a dangerous thing because uh, we, as you'll discover later, we all only know in part. We don't know it all. I don't know about you, but I don't know everything and you don't know everything. And so sometimes when we take it into interpretation or we take it out of context or we don't know the whole picture of the context, uh, we can struggle and we can come up with our own opinions and our own preferences and our own viewpoints, but they're arguing over what does the written word mean? But they're also arguing over, uh, is John the Baptist someone who is actually preparing the way for the coming Messiah for this Jesus? Uh, They're also arguing, can God take the form of a man? Uh, In the Old Testament, the other Pharisee quotes several times where it says that 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 man cannot survive by looking at the face of God. In fact, uh, in the Old Testament, Moses saw God, uh, but it says that he saw God's backside because God passed through because if he were to see his face, he would have died. And in fact, even just the glimpse of God, uh, the backside of God that Moses got, he often had to wear a veil over his face because the glory of God was shining so brightly that it was blind people and it was it was was not a good thing to do so they're arguing over this uh, can God take the form of a man and early in the episode this is what Nicodemus says they're arguing back and forth and Nicodemus says this quote uh, to this other Pharisee if God did something that you felt contradicted the Torah would you tell him to get back in the box that you have carved for him or would you question your interpretation of The Torah. Now, let me tell you, the Torah is uh, the original written word of the Bible, the first five books of the Bible. But he asks an interesting question that I'm going to ask you today. If God were to do something that you thought was contradictory to what he said in his word, would you tell God to get back in the box or would you maybe question your own interpretation of what the Bible actually says? If he did something that you felt contradicted it, would you tell him to get in the box or would you question your own interpretation of what he actually said? This is a a common theme we actually see even throughout the New Testament in Jesus's ministries is he did things that that kind of broke out of the box. They thought uh, you should the, the, the word said, hate, hate your enemies, love your love those who love you. And Jesus is like, no, I, that's easy. Hey, you've heard it said, don't commit murder. But I'm telling you, if you even hate your brother, it's as if you've already committed murder. If you look at a woman in a wrong way or you have an, a thought, a lustful thought, it's as if you've already committed sexual immorality. Jesus broke the box of what was written and what was communicated because he was the one that ultimately carried the heart behind it because the Bible says that he was the word and he was with God in the beginning and the word was God and then he came and he was in the form of a man Jesus Christ and so this this quote it rocked me he goes on to say we forget that we are all still students all of us and our understanding will not be complete until the end. And so he's he's trying to have this conversation, Nicodemus is with this Pharisee, and he's saying, listen, I, I, something's going on. Uh, there's miracles that are happening. There's signs and wonders that are happening. And I'm hearing about this Jesus, and, and I'm, it's beginning to wreck my viewpoint of how I thought uh, following God was supposed to be and how uh, our religion and how our traditions and everything that they were doing was coming into question in his own mind. In fact, uh, he we could relate that today. He was deconstructing, not his faith in God, but he was deconstruct, de- deconstructing the systems and the rituals and the religion and the tradition and the form of, of, of religion that we had built. And in fact, that's happening today. Many of us are deconstructing not our faith, not our belief in God, not in who Jesus is as the Savior, as our Lord of our lives, but we're deconstructing the traditions and the systems 
that we've built that we call church, that we call and associate with Christianity and asking, is this really what God intended? And that's what was happening here with Nicodemus and the other Pharisee. Uh, in fact, he was, as he was saying this, Hey, we don't know it all. Uh, this, this, he may be doing something different. I can't understand it. He's actually echoing what the apostle Paul wrote later in first Corinthians 13, nine through 10. And then in verse 12, it says this. Now our knowledge is partial and incomplete. And even the gift of prophecy reveals only part of the whole picture. But when the time of perfection comes, these partial things will become useless. Now we see things imperfectly, like puzzling reflections in a mirror, but then we will see everything with perfect clarity. All that I know now is partial and incomplete, but then I will know everything completely, just as God now knows me completely. Paul is echoing the same thing. Listen, uh, let's be careful to think that we know it all. Let's be careful to think that we've arrived. Let's be careful to think that we're spiritual experts. Can I tell you that even here at Be The Church, we, we don't claim to know it all. We are not spiritual experts. I am not a spiritual expert. No, we're spiritual guides. We want to help guide you and guide each other uh, towards Jesus and just to hear and come alongside you and help you discover what does the word of God say to you and how can we help foster that relationship between you and Jesus. We're spiritual guides, not spiritual experts. And so I want to give you three ways to avoid, just like Nicodemus, he was processing in this series. God, we don't, we don't ever, I don't know about you, but I don't want to put God in a box. I don't want to limit what God can or can't do. I don't want to limit the place that we can worship. I don't want to limit the experience that God is speaking to you. I want to help foster and develop that and, and, and pray about that and come alongside you and agree with that. But here's three ways that we can avoid putting God in a box and hopefully not miss what he potentially wants to do in a situation. So number one, let's understand and admit that you don't know it all. You don't know it all. You haven't arrived. I haven't arrived. And guess what? We never will. According to the apostle Paul, we won't arrive. We won't know it all until the end, until we're in heaven, until we're standing around the throne. Then we will know all things just like Jesus knows all things. And so let's admit Let's confess. I know sometimes we can pretend like we got it all together. We can pretend like we have all the answers, but listen, we don't know it all and we will never know it all. Uh, we hope, we believe, we have faith, uh, but we don't know it all. And so number two, let's be open to listen and discuss with others who have different viewpoints than us. Let's be open and listen to those who have different viewpoints than us. Can I tell you that it's it's okay to listen and have conversations with those that don't agree with every single uh, philosophy, every single uh, theology agreement, whatever it is, it's okay to listen and be open and have those conversations. In fact, one of the greatest signs of spiritual maturity is the ability to openly listen and be friends with those who don't agree with everything that you believe. I believe it's a sign of spiritual maturity. Uh, one of the greatest signs to just have conversations, to listen, to ask questions, to learn more, because here's what's going to happen out of that situation. We're either going to uh, learn something new and we're going to be able to say, wow, I never saw it that way. And it now has changed our viewpoint. Uh, our belief system has now changed or uh, we will have this conversation and we will now uh, uh, strengthen our viewpoint on where we are at and what we believe. And it'll, so it'll either change our viewpoint or it'll strengthen our viewpoint. That's why it's important that we have conversations and that we're open uh, to listening and asking questions and learning more, not for the sake of proving ourselves right, but just for the sake of learning. And again, being open, uh, man, maybe, maybe God can speak through somebody can I tell you, if he spoke in the Bible, he, he spoke through a donkey, he can speak through anybody or anything that he wants to. And so let's be open to just listen and learn uh, and get better uh, through anybody, whether they agree with us or not. So that's number two. So number one, understand and admit we don't know it all. Number two, let's be open uh, and listen to those who don't always agree with everything that we we have, we believe or we, we say or anything like that. Third thing, listen to the word, read it aloud and let it affect you. Listen to the word, read the word, read it out loud, let it affect you. What is the word ultimately saying to you? I'll write it out, process it, listen to it, think about. See, here's the thing. Many of many of us Christians in today's 
world, we only believe what we believe because a pastor taught us that. We only believe what we believe because our parents or our grandparents taught us that. That's a mistake. That is actually a foundational mistake because here's the thing, if you only believe it because someone else told you and taught you to believe it and you actually don't know the why behind the what you don't know why you believe it you don't know where that belief comes from you don't know the foundation on which that belief is built i want to just question maybe you actually don't truly believe it and the scary thing is is you could get to the end of your life and get to heaven and jesus will say listen I never knew you, but you, you, you're like, wait, wait, I, I did all the right things. I, I said all the right things. I attended all the services I served. I did all these things. And he's going to say, I never knew you. And it really stems back from the fact that you really never had that belief for yourself. And you didn't know the why behind the what, and you didn't really make that decision for yourself. You just believed it because somebody told you and taught you to believe it. Somebody told you and taught you that that was right. And this was wrong. And so we have to listen to the word. We have to read the word for ourselves and let it speak to us. Let the word of God, let the Holy Spirit through the word of God uh, speak to us. It's amazing when we sit down and we read the word out loud and we process it and we think about it, we pray over it. When you ask God, what are you speaking to us today? It's amazing. It'll it'll speak to us. It'll change us. It'll it'll. It'll open our eyes. It'll open our enlightenment. It'll open our minds. It'll open up our hearts. And we begin to process and believe something and really have a foundational belief because God himself spoke to us through his word. And so I just want to encourage you, those three ways to avoid putting God in a box. Let's understand. Let's be humble, uh, not prideful. We don't know it all and we never will. Let's be open to listen and discuss with those that don't believe what we believe. And then let's actually read the word, listen to the word, let it affect us. All right, everybody. Hey, those are three ways to avoid putting God in a box and hopefully uh, not miss out on what he wants to do in the earth, in and through us. All right, everybody. Hey, we're praying for you. We are here. If you want to share, like, subscribe to this video, we would love for you to do that. Also, you can feel free to text us. If you got questions, you'd love to hear us talk about something, share something. We'd love to be able to do that as well. I just connect with you and encourage you in your faith to put your faith into action and be the church everywhere that you go. All right, everybody have a great day. God bless.